What's up guys? Welcome back once again to Chris Aquariums. I'm going to change my shirt. Good morning guys. Welcome back once again to Chris Aquariums. You can see behind me that the tank is looking a bit different. We did a rescape. Let's talk about it. Let me show you how I did it. Let's get started. So this tank wasn't always like it is right now behind me. As you know, when I started in the saltwater marine hobby, I started with a 60 liter that looked like this. It's very simple, literally just three rocks, and we still have those three rocks today. But I wanted to ramp it up a little bit, especially when we moved into this new tank, which started off like this. So three small rocks at the bottom of a tank is not very exciting, it's also not representative of an ecosystem and it doesn't have any hiding spaces for the fish. So I thought the next step would be at the very least just to get a shelf rock, more space for corals and a little area for fish and other creatures to hide, which looked like this. But I wanted more. It was too small, it needed more to it, it needed height, it needed diversification of structure. And in order to do that, I had to add more rocks and I didn't want to add more rocks without the structural integrity that comes along with it so they don't fall over. Stacking rocks is fine, but if it falls, you're, what's a YouTube friendly word? In trouble. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a three rock pillar base, a plateau rock for the middle, and one rock on top to give it some height. That would mean there'd be space at the bottom for fish to swim, for fish to hide, a plateau for a lot of the corals, and then a top rock to give it some height and also an area to place more corals and structures. That is not gonna to stick together by itself. So after a bit of research, I decided to use some epoxy putty. I asked a lot of people their opinion. I read a lot on Google, watched a couple of videos, and there are some epoxy putties that are not safe for marine aquariums. And there are some that are, you just have to make sure that what you use is safe for the reef tank. For what it's worth, this is the one that I used. Can I tell you, this next part is stressful because the rock I'm using for the structure is already in the tank and it already has some gorgonia coral on it that had been glued on, so I couldn't take it off. Additionally, there's beneficial bacteria on these rocks that I don't want to die. So you can't have it out of the water for too long and you have to build the rock structure and let the epoxy cure. It was a stressful process. It took me about 17 minutes. But let me show you that in one minute. Have you ever gotten to the end of a project and realized that you hadn't thought it all the way through? That was me with the rock work because I finished it, I looked at it, it looked great and then I thought how in the world am I going to get this into the tank? Because the epoxy only fully cures after 24 hours so it can't be picked up and put into it without it breaking apart. I basically sorted out, what I did is I got a tray that I had cleaned and I slid it underneath the rock work, I then placed that into the tank and pulled the tray out from under the rock work very carefully and I got it back into the tank, thankfully with no problems. 
Now at that point, I hadn't placed the corals yet. I have now, but you'll see that one in next week's video. But take a look at what the rock work looks like now. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks absolutely great. It was the first rockscape I'd done on a marine tank and it came out pretty good with a couple of challenges. So that's it for today's episode guys. There's so much more to come. The next video you'll see the corals that we place into the tank. And thank you for staying along this journey. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithms. Leave a comment if there's any questions or anything that you want to know. And if you like these kind of things, marine tanks, ponds, aquariums, Subscribe to the channel, follow along the journey. There's a lot more to come with this tank and my others. I have a build planned in the next couple of months that you'll see. Thanks for following along, guys. Thanks for watching. That's it from me. I hope to see you next time, as always, on Chris Aquariums.